Good day, I'm Grant Pringle, agronomist with Panar Seed. And today I'd like to take an opportunity to, to share some technical information with you about an, on, on maize prep production, focusing on soil fertility and maximizing water supply to the, the maize crop. Okay, before we get on to the technical aspects of, of this, let's first have a look at the maize plant and see what its needs are um, in, in terms of nutrition and, and water, water supply. If we look at the, the dry matter percentage makeup of, of, a, of a maize plant, we very quickly see that 95% of the plant is made up by carbon, oxygen and hydrogen. These three elements are supplied from, from the atmosphere and from water. The other 13 elements, which only make up 5% of the dry matter of a maize plant, are what we traditionally fertilize for and are supplied by, by the soil. But without that critical 5%, the production potential of the maize plant is dramatically reduced. Those 13 components it gets from the soil are critical to the growth and um, productivity of the maize plant. If we look at how a maize plant grows and uses its nutrition through the season, um, we will see that at the beginning of the crop from the, the early seedling stages, its nutrient demand is, is very low. And then from about V6 until the emergence of the tassel, it go, the plant goes into an accelerated growth phase and has a, a lot of vegetative growth and also root growth down in, into the soil. And during this 40 to 50 day window of, of growth, about 65% of the nitrogen requirement of the plant is taken up during this period, 50% of the phosphorus and over 75% of the potassium is taken up in, in this very short window. So obviously for the plant to be able to take up these nutrients, the, the, the nutrients need to be taken in, in, water, in soil solution um, or out of the soil solution in the water. And without water, none of this active growth and absorption of nutrients can happen. That is why we look at f fertilization and water supply in, 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 in the same um, con context. Without one, you can't get the other. So from tassel onwards, the plant's um, focus shifts from, from active vegetative growth to a more um, re reproductive phase and starts to build yield for, 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 for the coming harvest. At this stage, root growth slows down dramatically. So the ability to harvest nutrients and water also starts to, to decline to some extent. And um, the, the, the plant will then take up its remaining nutrient requirements, but primarily Water supplies is, is what is happening um, during the second half of, of the growing cycle of the maize plant. Okay, so now that we know what the maize plant needs, what, what is the role of, of the farmer in this whole process? And there's basically two primary roles that we, we, we need to get in place. They're basically the cornerstones of that maize's growth and development. Firstly, we need a fertilizer program that can supply the, the right levels of, of nutrition for that plant. And secondly, we need to look at the physical parameters of the soil to ensure that we can maximize water supply to the plant. Those two hand in hand will give that maize crop the best opportunity for performing through the season. If we focus firstly on the fertilizer program, um, I'm sure you've all seen s s somewhere um, in, in the past the barrel theory of limiting factors. Basically, the yield within the barrel can only get up to the, the point of the, of the, the lowest or the, the, the first limiting factor. Irrespective of the levels of, of other soil nutrients, the yield can only get to, to that point. And this is known as the, the law of the minimum. Yield can improve so long as all the plant's needs are met. And as soon as one element becomes limiting, the, the yield can only advance once that limiting factor is, is, is supplied, regardless of the levels of other or oversupply of, of, of other elements. Your, your limiting factor becomes the, the threshold for yield potential. So from this law of the minimum and this, um, this barrel theory that we have here, we can very quickly see how important soil testing is in your, in your farming operation. Without knowing what is in your soil and what levels are in your soil, 
you are in a very weak position to be able to make sure that you are, are supplying sufficient of those 13 nutrients that are, are supplied by, by the soil to make sure that your plant has sufficient of everything to be able to perform at its optimal level. So once you have a, 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 a good soil test result, you can apply the, a fertility program based on the sufficiency level approach. Um, and this basically means that you look at each element on its own and you supply it to a threshold level um, so that the plant will have enough of each element to be able to perform at a, at, at, at a targeted yield threshold for, for the, a particular crop and, and a soil type. So the sufficiency level theory basically takes into account your soil type and your nutrient le levels and from there you can work out a, a, a very accurate and scientifically repeatable fertilizer regime um, which will definitely give you the edge in terms of, of supplying what you need to the crop when, when, when it needs it. The, the, the next parameter that we need to look at is providing sufficient moisture for that crop. If we look at the, the water use efficiency of the maize plant, it can generate around 15 kilograms of grain per millimeter of, of water that it has available to it. Um, so that, that's a, a general, generally accepted rule of thumb, um, but in certain scenarios, like in, in, the, in the previous season's National Grow for Gold yield comp competition, we saw farmers achieving 17 to 25 kgs of grain per millimeter of, of available moisture. So if we look, look at that in context, if we, have, if we are able to get an extra 65 mils of water into your soil profile, we could theoretically generate an extra ton of grain yield out of that crop. Um, 65 mils may sound like a lot of, of, of extra water, but even if we get half that, that's still potentially a, a whole half ton of, of grain. As we know, the maize production area is generally the summer rainfall area of South Africa. And in the summer rainfall environment, most of the rain comes by way of thunderstorms. And thunderstorms by nature are generally quite violent events with heavy downpours in a short period of time. And what often happens is we see a lot of, of, of water that, uh, that's unable to, to penetrate into the soil and it runs out of the field and, and out of the land and is lost to, to the system and often taking with it a, a chunk of topsoil which is, is very obviously a, 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 ne a negative, um, a double negative so you're losing your topsoil and you're losing water that could be used for, for growth. So what can we do to make sure that we maximize that um, infiltration of moisture as rapidly as possible into the soil profile? There's a couple of things that we, we, we can focus on. The first one is we need to alleviate any compaction that may be uh, present in the soil. So compaction happens um, through, um, through settling of soil after tillage or simply by physical squashing and com compression of the soil through heavy machinery or an animal hooves. Um, and it basically what happens is that the soil gets compressed, your air spaces get re reduced, um, and the ability of water to percolate down into that profile becomes severely reduced. And the time of, that it takes to move through the profile is much longer. And as a result of that, we can see that surface runoff happening. So the primary um, way to re remove compaction is through targeted tillage with a time implement to break up any compacted layers, increase the, the porosity and, and the airfill spaces in that soil profile, which allows more rapid percolation of water down the profile. We can also use crop rotations. Um, crops with, with good strong tap roots or aggressive root systems can grow down into that compacted layer and those root channels provide conduits for water transport down deeper into the profile. Water can rapidly move in there and hopefully you will get less surface flow out of your field and more percolation down deep into the soil where your plant can then utilize that. 
The second aspect of, of um, or the, the sec second problem with so soil compaction is compaction at the soil surface as a result of capping or, or, or crusting at, at, at the surface of the soil. And this, this happens when we have rainfall impact on bare soil and the, 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 the action of those raindrops disperses the soil particles and breaks up any soil structure. And when that water drains away, your, your fine particles form a crust um, and a, a basically a, a skin across the top of the surface of the soil. And that will then prevent further infiltration of water from, from future rainfall events. The way we can help prevent this capping at the crust is by maximizing surface residues. Surface residues act like armor for the soil, or crop res residues at the surface act like armor for the soil, and help disperse that energy from rain, rainfall, raindrop impact, and protect that soil structure at the surface and help prevent soil capping. Your crop residues on, on the soil surface will also help reduce ev evaporation out of that soil surface, which which will then allow more moisture to be available in the soil for your crop. Residues at the surface also help slow down surface flow of, of water, allowing it more opportunity to percolate down into the profile. This crop residues on the surface will also, with time, add to or start to build organic matter content in the soil with all the very positive attributes that um, increased organic matter will bring to your pr pr production system. So while each farmer must decide for themselves what is the best practice for their situation on their farm, I challenge you to consider the following. The primary objective of management should be to maximize water supply and nutrient availability to the crop. Actions that support this, this objective should be rigorously guarded and pursued and actions that work against this objective should be eliminated or, or significantly reduced. If you're able to sort out your um, fertility through good soil testing and um, fertilizing to the threshold levels of each element and providing a good soil structure for good water infiltration and root penetration in, into the soil, Hopefully we will be able to increase the productivity of every hectare on your farm. Thank you.